Hey all, welcome to my studio, Joshua Walker, Wild Nature for the Travel, and this is a COVID unboxing for the new Mac Pro computer. But just before I get to the unboxing, I blogged a couple of weeks ago that I was going to do a um, sort of a thought process on why I bought this computer, because it's not an inexpensive uh, piece of machinery. So let's just dive into the economics of it um, before um, before we unbox it <clears throat> and I'll just talk about why it works for me and why it may or may not work for you depending on your situation so I purchased this as a business so as a business expense here in Australia uh, under my company name which means that uh, this computer which has a retail price of somewhere around the $19,000 mark um, was effectively after Apple discount of 6% about 18 and change so as a business, I can clean back the GST, or as it's known in the rest of the world, the VAT of 10%. So my computer, it's 18 and change, uh, gives me back about 1800 bucks straight away as well to the business. And on top of that, here in Australia, I can write off the computer instantly as an asset under $20,000, which means that for me as a business purchase, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, just purely from an economic perspective. So that may or may not work for you depending on your situation, but as a business tool for me, purely from a finance perspective, I can make the numbers stack up for my business. So that uh, that's the financial side of it. Let's put that to one side and look at the actual unboxing. So thanks to the courier for the extra ding here. Hopefully there's no drama with the, anything inside. I don't think there will be. It's, these things come extremely well packed, but we'll have a look. Uh, it was a day late being delivered, thanks TNT and thanks to the COVID crisis for that. So this box looks like it's going to be a disposable one-use item. Let's see how we go here. This is definitely going to be one use. We don't need that anymore. By the way, I might do a full tour of my studio at some point, if, for those of you who might be interested. Um, and just having a bit of a look around, so let's get this unboxed. Pretty sure this should just come come up from the top. Probably not because of this din here. Know about that? Have to see about that. Oh, I missed a bit here. That's why. Okay, now we should be in business. Okay. Okay. So inside the Mac Pro box itself. And looks like no damage to the box itself, so hopefully that was just a small ding in uh, in transit. We've got a couple of Velcro straps on the side here. Hopefully you can see that. And it just comes up on one side, up on the other, and again the top should just come straight off. And there we go. That is a seriously heavy piece of box. I think that's probably got the mouse and keyboard in it. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And then here we have the actual, not the keyboard, the keyboard is here actually. So uh, mouse is here, so I'm not sure what's in that part of the box to make it so heavy, we'll have to have a look at that. Uh, but here we have the actual computer itself, which is probably close to, I don't know, so between 10 and 15 kilos, so significant weight. Um, and um, the rest of the accessories it looks like are here at the bottom of the box. So we have Magic Mouse, we have Keyboard, what else do we have in here? A bunch of packaging and something else at the bottom, maybe power cables I would say. And then the actual computer itself which is wrapped up, so we'll just unwrap that. And there we have it. So before I get this plugged in and start talking about um, performance and things like that, which may come as a second video, it's probably worth talking just a little bit about the spec I went for on this machine. So I debated a long time about what I should order uh, because obviously there's some, some fairly significant cost differences between the different machines. In the end, I opted for 16 core with uh, 96 gig of RAM, eight terabyte SSD, with a W5700 video card, um, and I did not order the afterburner card. So uh, my reasons for that I'll go into later. 
But in speaking with some contacts I've got at Adobe, uh, some good friends, they advised me that there was not much point in going past 16 cores at this point in time um, for software such as Lightroom and Photoshop. It really doesn't take advantage of any extra cores. So in fact, they said 12 is probably more than enough, but I opted to go to 16 just for some overhead uh, for the future. Uh, so I've got a little bit of future proof um, built in. I mean, I, uh, this is a much more upgradable computer than the, the trash can that's behind me. Um, but uh, I don't want to have to upgrade the CPU, the GPUs or CPUs in this anytime soon. So I went for 16 cores, 96 gig of RAM. Uh, I had 64 in the trash can and that has been more than sufficient. But again, just some overhead, I decided to go to 96. I'm very browser heavy and um, program heavy. I tend to leave things open and never close them. So I can have 20 browsers open at a time, Photoshop, Lightroom running, uh, Final Cut, iMovie, a whole bunch of other stuff all running at the same time. So I'm, I'm heavy on RAM. So I went quite high on the RAM. I maxed out the internal storage at eight terabytes uh, because I'm going to run my entire Lightroom library of nearly half a million images off that SSD. Um, that's around about nearly five terabytes of storage just in the library and that should prove really, really fast. I've completely moved away from spinning disks now, except for uh, backup. So that's the only time I'm using spinning disks now, uh, just for backup. And um, eight terabytes should be sufficient for quite some time to come. And of course I can always add more later. There's now various options on the market already for uh, expandable uh, SSD drives up to 16 terabytes, which is a great option, but quite expensive at the moment. But that's something for the future. The GPU, I went with the W5700, which again, it was important to me to keep the total cost of this machine down to about 20,000 Australian dollars or less because of the asset write-off uh, tax benefit. So I was one of the areas I compromised a little bit was on the GPU. Uh, I don't do a huge amount of video editing. Um, I'm gonna see how I go. That's also the same reason I didn't order the Afterburner card. Um, I want to see how I go without, uh, without the Afterburner card and if I want to work in ProRes or not. Uh, the Afterburner card is optimized for ProRes, so we'll see, how, um, we'll see how that goes. If I need it, I can always order it at a later date. Um, I put off for a long time buying the 2013 trash can Mac because I felt like it was a bit of a downgrade from my old Mac Pro, the previous cheese grater to this one. Uh, it, the lack of upgradability has proven a problem for me and that's part of the reason that this machine is sitting here now. The GPUs in that are uh, not easily upgradable. There are very few options uh, and quite expensive still even today. So I decided to bite the bullet and move away from that uh, to this machine. So hopefully this is gonna serve me for many years to come. I'm gonna do another video um, once I've had it installed and up and running and we'll see uh, how the performance is. I think it's gonna be pretty, pretty blistering. I'm not gonna to bother to take this apart. There's plenty of YouTube videos online showing you how to do that. If you're interested, you can look that up. Um, so for now, we'll leave it there. That's the unboxing of the 2019 16-core, 96 gig of RAM, eight terabyte SSD Mac Pro. Let's see how it performs with Lightroom in another video. Cheers for now.